Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are not feeling well tonight, yes, Jesus. who are sick in body, that Thou would yes, let Lord. in this service yes, Lord. there be a healing wave from okay. glory. Yes, Jesus. We ask in Christ's name. We're so thankful that our uh, companions could come, and we're thankful that our ministers are here, but not our well on this platform. And we don't know what this bug is sweeping the land or what we brought back from Oklahoma or what we took out there. We don't know which way it went, but it's got a bunch of us. And we need thee to bring healing to our bodies. So we ask in Jesus' name that thou would bring healing. And while you're touching us, touch those in Oklahoma. It's not already run its course out there and everybody in between. Be well, be whole, be healed. In Christ's name we pray, be delivered. Oh, Jesus, come through our audience and bring healing to us and to the children, the various ones that are at home tonight. We're really something, Lord. Here we are back together after vacations all summer, and now we're facing this kind of thing. But we're glad. We're glad to face it in the name of Jesus. Glad for the help of Jesus. Glad to be together. Glad that fall is here. And we pray that it shall be in our soul, even autumn time, that we shall prepare, O oh Lord, for the winter before the spring rains come. The latter rain comes in the spring, not the fall. It comes in the spring. So we pray that I would prepare our hearts for the greatest time of the year, which, spiritually speaking, if we're able to see it, is the winter time. O oh Father, we love thee tonight. We're thankful Thank for your grace and for your glory for your mercy to us. We would beg of thee and beseech thee that thou would lead us tonight, thanking thee for thy mercy this morning. For surely it was a wonder to everyone in this place that God worked as he did. Oh, the hymn singing was so wonderful. Lord, you anointed. And we pray that we'll give our best at all times, but even at our best, unless you anoint, it is not food for our souls. Thank you for the prayer that Dad prayed. Oftentimes, I too have been called upon to pray because I was so dependent upon Thee. More dependent, perhaps, because of not feeling well. Thank you for these that are in the choir tonight. We pray for their strength. And we pray for gladness of heart. Strength and in spirit. So much of our strength has to do with our spirit. And then, Lord, we pray that Thou will continue to help us to shoulder the cross, yes, to cherish it, the very will of God itself, for in that comes great strength. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons that Reverend Helm is able to make it, I was telling him this tonight on the phone just a little while ago, one of the reasons he's able to make it and have such strength at 65 years of age, when after an hour or two, younger men like us would be stricken, take us two or three days to recover after a couple of, couple of hours of trying to, that's what the Lord said about Roger, yeah. take him about two days to recover, take him a, a day for each hour. But we marvel at Brother Ham that he's able to go that distance and uh, if it were a normal church service, he wouldn't be able to go probably an hour to two hours. But to go five and six hours, and to go five and six hours, and to go five and six hours, and to go that three days, or to be in revival meetings with him, like when he comes back home from Israel, he'd be here. Wednesday night through Sunday, perhaps Monday or Tuesday. And you notice that there's such strength. He has such strength in the meetings proper. Now, one of the reasons for that is because of the death to the inner self some years ago. Most of us, when we enter a service, enter a service with ideas. Yes. Those ideas will wear us out. I believe it. Most of us are rigid on the inside. Yes. We're not pliable to the will of God. Yes. Though that rigidity will wear us out yes. and break us. Yes. Brother Helm doesn't have that. Yes. He's in a service... He just tries to have not any ideas at all. And if, if anything comes to him, he quickly gives it to Jesus. 
And he doesn't think this or that and the other. And so there he is, contented with God. Whatever God's got in mind, it's to help a little soul or have a great song or a special, whatever it is. And he goes for hours with no uh, damage to his system, though it should damage the normal man. The reason we can't stand up so well is because of carnality. I shared this with him. He agreed. That's why we have a hard time waiting. I've never told you that before, but I just thought I'd tell you. It'd be good for you. Doctor told me, Dr. Sellinger told me I was going to have to have more of this in my blood. That was good to know. If you want to be a healthier man, you've got to have more of this in your blood. I was thankful for that. I didn't get mad at him. I didn't get humped up. I didn't walk out so I don't feel good in this place. Don't like what I heard. I said, well, I... The secretary insisted on telling me what's the matter with my blood. Mm -hmm. I was thankful about that. Amen. So I just told us a little bit about what's the matter with our blood. Yes, sir. Our spiritual blood. Carnality. Carnality. Blood. That, there's where we break. There's where we wear out. Yes, sir. There's why we can't last. Especially where God's in control. Now I said something else. Brother Ham. We may not have the work of God that God did in you. But I said, if we trust God, if we really love him, and we have confidence in your walk with him, we can lean into that, and we'll get stronger with each meeting. Mm -hmm. And he said, son, you found that to be true for 15 years, haven't you? I said, yes, sir. Yes. So I started at Oalton, Oklahoma, so weary and bone that I could hardly sit on the front pew. And boy, when your bone, bones ache, and you're going to be in a five-hour meeting, what you want to do is get rid of your first idea, and that's that you're not going to last. Because mm -hmm. yes. that's a sure way to go down. That's right. You'll go down with that. Folks, I'm giving you a wonderful spiritual yes, thing. Yes, sir. I'm telling you something wonderfully spiritually. Yes, sir. If the Christ of Galilee had taught you three days and three nights on the shores of Galilee, you'd want to hear what I got to tell you right now. Oh, yes. Man. And he taught throughout his three years, yes. long and lengthy times. He didn't know what it was. Man, what, what man would hold a man three days and three nights on the side of a sea? Until he gets so hungry, he'd have to feed 5,000, 4,000. Well, Jesus will do that. Jesus has been known to do that. Yes. Prophets have been known to do that. Yes. People will be so hungry. But uh, in, in walking with him, if we have certain ideas, we have an idea that, that we're a good singer, yeah. and we're waiting on our name to be called, we're going to wear out and break. We're going to quit going. Yes, sir. That's going to get us. Yes, sir. Got an idea that we're a certain preacher. We've got yes. a certain quality of preaching. Yeah. We're going to wear out, folks. Yeah, it'll get you. That's going to tie up the meeting. Now, the Lord witnessed that any time we have an idea in our head yeah. about a meeting, we, cr we crowd Christ out. Think of it. Try it. We crowd him out. Help us, Jesus. And so that means that most worship is dead from the start because most folks... Most preachers start with the idea that we're going to be out here at 830. Yeah. And even if it's bubbling over, we're not going any longer at 9 o'clock. Now, the Holy Spirit is grieved at that point and cannot work in that service. That's right. Anywhere in this land. Yes. That is, he cannot be the ruler of that sanctuary. He might work with a soul and help a soul that's struggling to him. But as far as ruling the congregation, he cannot be the head of that body. Yeah. It's, in, it's an impossibility. It violates the law of God. For God only stays where he wants. God will not feel in his loveliness that place where he's not wanted. I, I just thought this was so wonderful because I never had this insight myself until I was on the phone tonight. Yeah. And suddenly I was responding. And I'm telling you, the glory hit us. I began to cry. And I knew that I had, I had struck home spiritually because I heard him on the other line. Touches my heart now. Heard him on the other line. I had, oh, oh Jesus, you've helped me to see that. I wish I had known that four or five years ago when I was about to fall off the front seat. Yeah. Yes. We're tempted to blame the other fellow instead of us. Somebody said to him one time, Brother Him, why do you hold these long meetings? Well, Brother Him looked at him and said, Well, I really, it's, I'm not holding any long meetings. He's forgetting out of the right of way. God's not in it. Yes, Boy, but you'd see him try to dismiss at Oilton. He'd start to dismiss. God'd say, pray. Even though he had warning signs, 
in his head of, that his strength was gone, he would have warning signs that he needed to go to a place where God would say pray. And then the next leading would be so wonderful that the Holy Spirit would bring great, great power and the, and the signs would go away. Yeah, he'd just be at his, he'd just be at the limit. I wonder how Billy Hill feels about Brother Ham hanging on behind or past his normal endurance. It was Billy willing to speak to that point. Is she in the crowd tonight? Yes. How do you feel about Reverend Helm staying longer than his physical body was able? Thankful. Very thankful. And, you know, it's really something because I think about you too here holding services. I was talking to Chase one day. I said if people had any, I don't want them to come out wrong, but if, if they could just think about it, even just with common sense, your pay if it's for pay, what, you're going to get the same pay if you're here an hour or whatever. Lord help me. And, and it's not easy for you or Brother Hill to stay all those hours. And for you all to, to obey God, it's, if anybody could just think, it's not, it's not that. No. You're just trying to do what God tells you. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and where the joy of the Lord is flowing, there is strength and refreshment. But the pressure, the pressure of this. Now, you know, Racine finally convinced me. They never bothered me anyway. But they, but see, when you first came, if you remember that my concern over them, still that concern, I pray for them coming and going, ask God to help. But they proved to me after five years that they didn't want me to give a thought to that, just to try to obey God. That's why you've not heard me mention any about it anymore. Why? Because they put me at rest. Mm -hmm. They leaned into to, to the trust of me leaning upon God, yes. of us leaning upon God. So I haven't had any pressure from Racine or, or Jack and Loretta Carpenter and uh, Peggy. I haven't had any pressure from them. Therefore, yes. if they can't bring any pressure on me, yes. how does anybody, anybody else dare have the right to? Yes. Now, right now, I don't know of anybody doing it. Yes. I've just take, I'm just giving you a principle. Yeah, right. But See, God had a time to heal me. Yeah, he, that's it. It wasn't the first hour no, or the first no, day. It was, no, no. He had the time. Was and the, Brother Hill was willing to obey God. That's right. And he stayed tried to leave that platform. I don't know how many times he tried to get off of there with his body, with his flesh just quivering like that, knowing that he had to get the room and lie down. Start to the edge. Jesus said, wait, pray. He'd come back. <laughs> He'd, he'd say, pray about it. What is it, Jesus? Jesus would tell him. He thought that'd be all. He'd start off that platform. Does anybody know how many times he came back before he prayed for Billy? How many? He, all right. C came back three times before he prayed for Billy. What if he had just prayed two times and then left? She would still have, or she may be dead, she would still have excruciating pains in her head, still under medication, still having to go to doctors, wouldn't be healed. Now, there are people, Rodney, who feel that what happened to you could have happened any old time. But you and I know it is not true that you would be far deep in sin today if we hadn't obeyed God and come here, made those trips over to Marshall, let you see our heart, didn't try to argue with you, just loved you, and, and uh, you hadn't a thought enough had enough civility within you to try to help your home church, even though you didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in God. He thought, he thought man, intellectually, he thought we were machines. He thought we were no more than stimulus and response. That's what Rodney felt like we were. But out of civility, out of the teaching of his youth, he came to that, that building campaign and God got a hold of his soul. He saw that the evidence it accumulated on him that night. He saw that, the, the, that, that God was in this place and in this ministry. He knew that I was either crazy or being directed by God. There, there was no other explanation because Rodney's mind was, a mathematical mind was one with logic. He said, no man can act like this unless he didn't have any sense or he's obeying God. To defy what he defies. And, and when he saw that whatever we did, we tried to do it with love, he knew that a crazy man couldn't act that way. You know, Ishmael was a wild man. He was against man. Well, he saw that Jesus helping it wasn't Ishmaelite. Right. So he decided if it wasn't Ishmaelite, it had to be something else. And on the basis of the evidence, he came and gave his heart to God. What I started out to say was the timing for his salvation had to be in our coming. Yeah. Had to be just exactly yeah. what it was by God's grace. Or Rodney would still be lost today, most probably. He would still be out in sin. He's pretty sure this is right. Oh, yes. See, But there are people all through this valley that thinks he'd have got saved anyway. 
that he would have come back to his boyhood days. They rely on a scripture that says, train up a child in the way he should go when he is old, we will not depart from it. There's only one thing wrong with that. He had already departed from it. If he's trained up in the way that he ought to go, he'll never depart from it. See, he was already departed. They forget that, what are you going to do if you're already departed? He departed from the way of his youth. Then it took God's mighty hand of mercy to pull him back in. It took somebody to get reality to him. Yes. Combination of the writings of Dr. Schaefer right. and our own ministry coming here has swept him right in through the right. gates. A man who was honest. A man who's an honest man will get swept right in. But somebody else has to obey God to get to his honesty. Or you can't get him. See, so Billy. Brother Hill was so exhausted. Uh, they were holding him up. Yeah, if just, anybody, it just to me, I don't want to come out wrong, but if you just had this common sense, yes. uh, mm -hmm. anybody could see that it wasn't there by his choice. No. He just tried mm -hmm. to obey God. That's right. That's his choice to obey right. God. But he right. been up to him in the way he felt himself. He'd been a lot better in the bed. Oh, yes. But, but you see, the Lord kept bringing him back. And so he came back three times. Then he prayed that Jesus said somebody was hurting. We saw him put his hand right up here. He told us what the, what the condition was. Jesus showed him. Now, isn't it something that he would have that identical, have her identical symptoms in his head? See, he feels that with you. That's tremendous. God would tell him where that is. See, now maybe a lot of you didn't know that. But a lot of times when he does that, God told, shows him right. He'll be preaching with somebody's hurting in the head. The reason he says it is because he can feel it. God tells him right where that is. When God gives him that right in the head, that means he wants to heal you. It means he wants to touch it. Well, someone's hurting in the leg right here. Well, God, he's, he knows it because it, the Lord touches him. Isn't that great? Yes, sir. So he, he knew right where Billy's situation was. And... Uh, and uh, she felt the hand of Jesus go across and come back. And, of course, the pain went out and God healed her. Because, because he was willing to stay to the midnight hour of the third day. And Billy was willing to take my words through her pastor then, Pastor Dave. I said, well, tell them to hang on because they, so, they were so upset. Second day, they wanted to leave. Well, that was understandable. There'd never been anything like it before. Humanly speaking, they had a right to be upset. What in the world do you do getting up at starting at 7 in the morning, going 12 night, and you don't even have time to get rested good, it seems, and get back in there and go to church again? Well, this time we started at 6, and then it got earlier and earlier. <laughs> it, is that my right? Started at 6, then was, what was it next morning? 5.30? Well, anyway, the last morning was 5 o'clock, which was 4 o'clock Indiana time. There was a lady there with Sister, uh, Sister uh, Dunnigan that kept saying to her, Now, my, there won't be anybody there at 6 o'clock, she said. Why, Helen, there won't be anybody there at 6 o'clock. Well, she came to the 6 o'clock meeting. There's 850 to 900 people. And she was shocked. The next day was a little earlier. Was it 5.30? 4.30 Indiana time. God kept backing it up on us. You know what he's trying to weed out? He's trying to weed out some people. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. That's part of it. Listen, if you were aggravated the first day, how are you going to feel the second day? It's not 6 o'clock, but it's 5.30. Or if you're on the other side of the Indiana line, it's 4.30. Huh. Next day, Jesus said five o'clock. Boy, that, that lady came two days in a row. She didn't come the third day, but she came to, she said, well, there won't be but a handful here in the morning, 530. Got there the next morning, it was 850 to 900 people, like before. Somewhere a thousand, it fell up to about a thousand. But see, isn't that wonderful? That Jesus would... Work, work with us like that. I was speaking of his strength and speaking of how that he has that strength. It's because he pushes any ideas out of his head. See, that's so good to know. I, Stephen, we sit there on the front seat, but God's grace tried not to have any ideas. You and I and Jack, we just tried to sit there and praise the Lord. Now listen to this, Jack. All these 15 years, most of the time, most all the time, I start exhausted. And by the time the meetings are over, I feel like a new man. Now, how can you explain it? I said, Brother Helm, if we love God, if we're hungry for God, and we know you're walking with Jesus, and we trust you, I said, that strength will come to us also, because I felt it for 15 years. Yes. See, isn't this something? Yes. It happened to you this time. Now, I'm going to tell you a little something. 
I got him on the front row. I got word up to the thing since he didn't have to direct you anymore, you know, and stay on his side. I said, now, I want him up there somewhere with us. Now, I got him up there with us. I got dressed. Got him right next to me. He hurt so bad in the back the first day that he didn't think if it got any worse, he's going to be able to make it. But the next day, he didn't hurt so bad. And the third day, he was about as comfortable as I was. And Jack, Jack, that's great. That's great. Jack, it has, Jack, it's wonderful. It has something to do with our willingness to die to self, our willingness to trust God, and our willingness to trust his, the leading of the Holy Spirit to his servant. That's why that strength came into us. Isn't that wonderful? But if we have ideas, they crowd out Jesus and they, they make us weary. Isn't this something? I don't know if I ever shared this before in this place. But this is a helping us. This is so great. I'm not pulling for a long service night. I'm not even preaching. Lord helping. Maybe I've already been preaching. But it is a great thing to know spiritually. And I, I have wondered about it myself. But tonight when I shared it with God's servant, he rejoiced. He praised the Lord. Because he said, son, we're in a wonderful place here. Because he knew that what I was saying was true. Isn't this great? That God, it's a supernatural work. We need the supernatural help of Jesus to make it. There is a burden to carry in these services. But it depends on where we, if we take that burden to God as to whether or not we can get lifted. So I know there, there are those who are sick. When you're sick, you're sick. You need help. Uh, apart from sickness itself, but isn't it wonderful that Jesus can even come in a meeting and take all the sickness out of bodies? I just pray that God will go through your bodies and make you well and lift you. I have tried to rest all week just to have strength for today. My wife can tell you that I was so strong in this meeting. We're so strong today that I couldn't hardly lay in my bed. That is, I felt so good that I rejoiced most all afternoon. I, I laid down on principle. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'll tell you what, dear ones, you folks that run around on Sunday afternoon, hmm, God bless your heart. Can I say a little something? I got about half cooperation here. If you're carrying much of a spiritual burden, you're carrying the weight of, the, the weight of this church. Unless the Holy Ghost leads, you won't be making any visits on Sunday afternoon. Unless Jesus is leading, my friend, there's too much weight in it. You'll rest for the service. And the man that'll rest for the service will stay with us the longest. Now, I want you to know Brother Williams over here and his precious wife having a great time with me. Chuck's having a night. Not everybody's happy with me, Chuck, but, but you folks are happy with me, and I'm glad about that because I'm talking pretty deep. Folks uh, get out and run in the flesh and go different places and not rest for meetings. Like, Brother, it's no simple thing to go to church around here. We're talking about army. I've been talking about army all these years, and I pretty well proved it after 12, don't you think? Amen. Brother, it's a great army going on around here. And so if we can learn that God wants us to have rest, he wants us to be rested, then we'll, we'll have the strength that we should have. Now, I don't want anybody to feel bad that was led of Jesus. To, to, to be out this afternoon. So, Brother Hogue, I'm not sure whether I was or not. Well, I don't want you to feel bad anyway. I just want you to get the principle of this thing. It may help you after a while. I'm not trying to cause anybody to feel bad. I, I had a little visit from uh, Jody and Jim. Uh, the first time they've ever come out to see me uh, that I know about. And uh, had to go see Betty because she's in the hospital tonight. But it was such a joy to have them come out to see me. I pray the Lord will reward them for their encouraging visit to us this afternoon. Well, for whatever that's worth, you may have it without charge. Praise the Lord. Hmm. I believe the first hymn that touches my heart. Now, these fellows have given me my, my, my. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't that wonderful? But I believe as I look through this, first hymn that I'm Jesus guides me to is hymn number 79. Come thou long expected Jesus. Hymn number 79, Pastor. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So I looked down and said, Jesus, which one is it to be first? He said, hymn number 79. Amen.
did you see what was sung here? I looked down the list. He said, sing this one first. Number 79. Jesus said that. Touch my heart. It seldom happens to me that God will guide me directly through the witness of the Holy Spirit. But he did tonight. Yes, sir, he, did. he did tonight. <laughs> what were you thinking while you were directing oh, that said, number? Well, Lord, out of all those, this is the one for sure. <laughs> this is it, Stephen. Look, he says, yeah. come, born to set your people free. Oh, I said, oh, God. I my fears and sins release. Oh, that, that's Let our problem. Find our rest. That's what makes us tired. Yes, that's right. What that's makes what us tired us is right our there. fears. Yes. We're fear the church going service going to be too long yes. or it's going to uproot us or change our way of life. Yes. We want enough to save us but not enough to liberate us. That's it. That's right. Isn't it something? Yes. Let us From our rest. fears and sins relieve us. Yes. Let us find our rest. All right. And see you were singing <laughs> so beautifully yes. I said oh God. But then the second stanza. Yes. Israel yes. strength. Yes sir. Yes sir. It's and right, consolation. It? Yes. Hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation. Joy. Joy of every longing heart. I had to get right in there because I knew what you were thinking. Yes, I was going to see if there's anybody in the audience. The audience was awake yes. or in the choir. Yes. Any of you start smiling in the choir? Yes. Oh, yeah. See, it's great. Yes. See, what's so great about it is man didn't have a thing to do with it. Right. These fellows prayed about the hymns. Jesus said, these are the one. Then after I gave him a little exhortation, Holy Spirit said, now sing this one. That's sing number 79 right, right here. Well, only God knew. That's right. Why, that's as wonderful as Jeannie singing this morning. Before the message, I I have found a hiding place. And afterwards, what's the name of that? Life is a symphony. And in that last stanza, it said, Stranger. What was it? No more stranger. He is the arranger of my symphony. Was that good? Jesus did that. Stephen put the list in front of me this morning and says, God, touch your heart on you. Well, I, I don't like for him to do that to me. I mean, I'm not mad at him, but he knows not to do that to me very often. So I kind of looked over at that list, you know, and I went, well, yeah, the Lord touched my heart. Touched he and Rodney on an earlier number, which blessed our hearts wonderfully. I found a hiding place. Oh, how that helped us this morning. But... The number that he touched my heart on, Jeannie sung at the close of the service. Seemed like to me, Stephen, it was, should have made us so happy. I, I was happy. We were happy together. I walked out this morning. There's a precious lady who comes on Sunday morning. Oh, she's a wonderful lady. Chuck, she was sitting where you are, sitting right there or just in front of you. I walked out this morning. I'm telling you, Chuck, is, I don't think Ms. Early's here tonight. But I'm telling you, she was weeping. She was so happy. She was so thrilled. And she grabbed my arm and I could almost feel, you know, I could almost feel that she wanted to embrace me. I could tell she was a cultured person. So my wife just ahead of me, I said, Barbara, come back and love this lady. Oh, God's really helping her. That's how thrilled she was. Thrilled with the message this morning. Thrilled with the way Jesus closed the service out. And here he's working with us tonight. I said, Jesus, uh, what are you going to do with us tonight? Well, he's, he's already helping us. See, this is great. I wanted to point this out because, uh, you know, this morning, Pastor saw a number of people sleeping. Sleeping? In the house of God? Well, yeah, it can happen. What you want to do to keep from sleeping is... Uh, not, these seats are awful comfortable. They're for people who have hurt, hurting limbs. They're not for people who go to sleep. Amen. And if you keep, you know, if you want us, if they're bothering you about going to sleep, we'll try to get some wooden benches back for all of you go to sleepers. So you can have pain in your back and stay awake. The Lord wants you to, if you've got a sleeping tendency, recognize it for what it is. It means important. It means what's going to happen. If you get it, it'll change your life. And so that means sit on the edge of your seat. See, if necessary, I'll tell you some of my secrets. Next, if necessary, get your ballpoint pen out, take your shoe off, and punch your feet. Praise the Lord. That may sound funny to people, but friends, it works. Because see, you're wanting. To, I have taken a ballpoint pen, and I'm telling you, my feet's had a rough old time. Boy, the sleep would start. I'd say, Hoo! like that. Well, I'd be awake. I'm serious. I'm serious. Listen, soldier boys in the Confederate Army and the Union Army, they did all kinds of things to stay awake because if, if they got caught asleep, they got shot. Yes, sir. 
Uh -huh. So pencils and ice and water and when I used to drive a car for long distances, sometimes I'd get sleepy, I'd get out, I'd get in a ditch and I'd put water on my face and I'd open the window and stick my head out and I'd pull up, pull up just, can you watch that, just that hard. Oh yeah. Why? I didn't want to die. I wanted my wife to have a husband. I wanted my mother and daddy to have a son. Yes, sir. How concerned are you about your spiritual death? Jesus, praise the Lord. How concerned are you about your spiritual death? See, I'm sounding silly to some. But I won't sound this way in a little while. Won't be a bit a little while I won't sound silly anymore. When he said, said that I will be foolish now, what was that? you remember? When he wrote to them, he said, Now may I speak as a fool? Yes. Yes, I remember that passage. See, remember? He said, I'll speak as a fool, but I hoping they get the point. After a while, but he God's wasn't wonderful being grace. A fool at all. Praise Neither the Lord. You, no, I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to obey God. Well, all right, Stephen, let's finish this great, right. this great hymn here tonight. Born thy people to deliver. Oh, hallelujah. the Lord. Let's sing number 146. We may not know all these, but oh, they're good for us. By his will he sanctifieth, by the Spirit's power within, by the loving hand that chasteneth, fruits of righteousness to win, by his truth and by his promise, by the word his gift unpriced, by his own blood and by union with the risen life of Christ. Oh, these are wonderful. Number 125. I just wonder if we could all sing it with books down, choir and congregation. It, we have, don't we have the funniest habits? We're, of course, that's all right. That's nice. Choir, you're supposed to hold yours up until told to put them down. 
that's just good for what you're supposed to do. But I thought, as pastor leads us, well, we know this song. And if not, we'll quickly remember the words as he's directing us. So why don't we just all stand as pastor leads us in this great, one of the great hymns of the Christian faith.
thrills my heart to think that in a few days we'll be somewhere throughout Israel singing a group of 150 almost singing perhaps this very song. Seems like we sung this down by Caesarea Philippi right there one day and there were soldier boys all around we appreciated our singing very much. You never know whose heart it's going to touch. Never know what witness you may need in that place that may be for eternity. Because any trip taken in, the, in keeping with the Holy Spirit means that all hearts could cross your path. Cross your path by the design of God himself. Thank you. Thank you. All of us. Barring that. <coughs> Think of that. Now, they may not be aware of it. But once in a while, somebody's aware of it. That something is passing through. Yeah. Woman that follows us around the Alhambra Garden. She won't know where we were, what in the world was this sound? She was praying to me. I hear something in your sound I've never heard before. That's what the man in the conservatory of music, the Granada Conservatory, that beautiful <coughs> Spanish man who's as handsome as this right here, our own bear. I mean, he tell you he was something to see. Come rushing in. We were singing this song. We were singing a live or light, come think of it. I believe that's right, wasn't it? When he came dashing through those doors, we were supposed to be 40 minutes late, but we were on time. Two or three said, I'm the head of the preacher, not a conservatory of music. I, I hear some, I, I, I'm trained in music. I hear something in your singing I might hear that you observed before. That here's my name, you may sing in the cathedral, you may sing in the gardens, and in the, where was it? There's another place. It, where? At the opera? We, he gave us the, the, the uh, kick ticket, his we, name, to the finest places we in uh, the open courtyard thing. Oh, yeah. Like the Indian, where they yeah. come from all over the world. All over the world to sing that. People want to sing that. sing the gardens and in that special room that's, that's right. the place. Where that was. Yeah, there's, there's a courtyard like that. People where you come from all over the world to sing that. that. And the Lord has seen the most wonderful places in the whole world. And there may be even someone here to reflect if you're faithful to sing as God would have you sing. There's something on your one heart. Praise the Lord. Yes, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Paul, I mean, Paul's faithful tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, I feel like I need to. I want to thank him for loving me, Pastor. Praise the Lord. For the testimony in these songs. It's a testimony that I look for all of my life. He's alive. I know because he's in my heart. And I want to I want to praise the Lord for my wife tonight. I have a special wife. Amen. Amen. I don't know how to say you can anybody pray to know how he loves you and me. Can you do that, Pastor? I'm not too good. Because he did. Oh, no.
glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you knew how hard the devil fought me before I called on that number, you'd be really oh, stirred up. See, because the leading's in between. The devil said, now, buddy, I got you right there. You got all fair. Of course, you could tell by the freshness we were on. Jesus was helping. He said, now, I'll flatten this one out. Yeah, that's what he was telling me. I said, oh, God, it'll only be by your mercy. Well, if, you'd, if, if the congregations would have sung that while I was a little boy, I'd have thought that was a good song. When I was little, that wasn't a good song because they didn't sing it under the anointing of God and it drug out and I didn't know it was a good song. Well, tonight it sounded like heaven to my soul. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. See, the devil's telling me, he said, buddy, I'll flatten this. Why does he do that? He's terrible, isn't he? Going to be caught in minutes. He tells you a lie like that. He, see, he tried to tell me that so I wouldn't do it. Yes, that's right. He tried to tell me that so I wouldn't go ahead and call for it. I said, now Jesus, sit down here. <coughs> We're going to go right ahead and sing it. Now you help us, Jesus. Yes. I was really trusting. Yes. Why, I never heard that like that in my life. I wish you'd have been with us when we was praying over there. Yes. I'll tell you. <laughs> Rodney, what you do? Just have a little bit. He'd say, Stephen, how many we go? <laughs> yeah, once we got to three, and I started going on. He said, Stephen, how many we got? We got three. I just kept right on going. <laughs> number one, number 36, 42. I'd say that after every one, and he'd just go right I'd on. I'd just go right on. I'd just... After about six, when he after finished, six. and I started going on. He started going on. <laughs> Choir, be seated and rest a minute. Glory, hallelujah. How good can Jesus be to us? Boy, I'm telling you, oh, if I'd have been a little boy and you'd have sung like that. Think what, think what a heritage our children have in this place. My goodness, they heard wonderful words of life like you and I have seldom heard it in our life. Instead of hearing it slow and drug out and like you didn't know what it was and like a funeral was here, brother, I'm telling you, it was so filled with life, I hardly knew it was the same song. Oh, it was so great, I hardly knew what to do. Stephen doesn't have to hardly direct it all. All he's got to do is just do that. I'm telling you, it's just wonderful. Boy, when people are fired up and thrilled with God and responding, you just have to do that. And it's just, boy, it's just great. You don't do much anything. There's no struggle, no pull because God is helping us. What kind of God do we serve that would help us like this That's tonight? The way I like to direct. Oh, I don't like to do much anything. oh no, like no, to it's the, the best kind of directing. The yes, least sir. motion, but to have an announcement of a song and cut it off, get it started, and let it go. Let her go. Friend. Oh, this is great. This is great. I don't hardly know what to do. It's so great. <laughs> How did God do that? How did He do that? Yes. Devil told me He's going to flatten that one out. I said, buddy, I got you now. Yeah. He said these leadings you just had weren't of the Lord. Now I'll show you. I'll flatten this one. Thank see, you. and then see, then I had a hard time calling for that number. I said, now, Jesus, you yeah. told the fellows that we were singing this, yeah. so I'm going to call for it. Well, when you started, I looked around at David. We didn't hardly know what in the world. I said, brother, I'm telling you. Oh, it was great. It was great in the choir. Let's sing now. Have the choir, and we'll have prayer later. Praise the Lord.
you've never seen an angel before but like to see something close to it, you might take a look at Martha Hudson. <laughs> you've never seen the Shekinah. We've been the God's wonderful grace. The Shekinah, oh, glory, thank you, Jesus. Almighty God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> so sweet. Yes. Isn't this wonderful? Yes. See, see, Martha's at home. Oh, it was a sight. She's at home. Yes. She, God's telling her something, boy. She's yes. just drinking in right straight yes. from glory yes. until there was no, oh, no color in her face. The glory, glory of God just yes. shining yes. so wonderfully. Shekinah all the way. Oh, I know. I you. oh isn't it wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, he said, why? Well, said, Jesus had to help you, Dick. Yes. See, I called him this afternoon to tell him how much I appreciated what they were doing and, and, and his directing. Mm -hmm. We were having a time with That's it right. this morning. He did that. But, oh, here we are again. Now, young people, if you want to know what, what you sound like at your best, you just heard it. Thank you, Lord. Your voices were young. Yes. And right. You sounded more like a youth choir than right. you did like an adult choir. Yes. Yes. The only thing is, you have the advantage because there's a ministry in your voice that can never come from you. It's probably through the battles of life and through the maturity that shows itself into the voice. And so that's why we have a sanctuary choir three times a week. But I just want to young people, if you know what you sound like at your best, that's what you heard right there. Because you see, the ministry was so wonderful. And oh, oh when you women would say, then the men would come in, oh, it was so great. What a great night God's given us. We're just taking time to point all this out because we'll never pass this way again. That's why I'm taking longer. I could sit here and go through it, but I would explode before it's over with. And you'd have to stop service to pick up the pieces and take me out. So I might as well get up and have a time while I'm at it. Might as well. So you don't know how close that is to being true. If the, if the glory gets to operate with me, you know, I thought, now, Jesus, I've never ran the aisles in this church. But Chuck, better luck out. Yes, because, Jesus, you're helping us so much, I'm liable to take off. It was so wonderful. Yes. <laughs> glory be to God. Well, should they go down or sing it again? What should we do? Hey, I'd love to hear it again, but it, it'd take Jesus for it to sound as sweet. Yeah, go down or sing it again. Is it on again? Will he, let, will he let us sing it? I believe he'll let us sing it again. I, think it's I believe Jesus is going to help us sing it again. He will sing it again. Sing it again so I could really get it. And I'm so thankful for that. And while I'm up, I want to testify to my healing Wednesday night. Amen. Because um, yeah. by Thursday morning, I woke up without a trace of a migraine, yeah, not God even stopped any after effect. And I felt so good all day Thursday, and I'm so Praise thankful for Praise that the and how the Lord has been helping. My wife wanted to hear that again. Barbara wanted to hear that again. So I wanted to do what was in order. But see, I knew unless God would lead, it wouldn't sound, it wouldn't minister again. But see, He's going to let you sing it again for us. So we'll just be delighted. See, that's speaking, that can speak to every heart in this place. That can help everyone. So we all need it. Every man's got a night to walk through. Every woman's got a night to walk through. When we sing it through the second time, we don't sing, He's alive and risen again. There's nothing now that can defeat Him, and I want to sing it. Okay. Praise the Lord. Well, it's going to be done by God's grace. I'm looking at you and then at your daughter. Yeah. Having such a wonderful time. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> yes, oh, Jesus. Jesus, how in the world do we ever, did we meet this family, these people? Oh, I'm glad Glendale's prayed. Oh, yeah. Glendale's prayed she's through the years. Warrior. She's, she's a prayer warrior. An intercession. So she's hung on. That's helped get us through here by God's grace. Everything. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm quite delighted that he's going to let us sing it again. Yes. Man, you sound wonderful. Amen. It's quite an experience. Yes. Not only Miss Roger, just Miss Roger, been looking for. He's probably sick or has to be away on a business engagement. But he's been here almost every time That's right. in the last six to eight weeks. Yeah, it's really been working. With and him. his beautiful face is a sight. See, I miss people today. Some names I can't call because I don't want them to feel I'm aggravated. But I've missed. I've called their names before Jesus, but I miss him tonight. And he's, God's helped him so wonderful. Well, this song is speaking to us in a wonderful way because it touched my heart. One time when you said safely through the night, he 
Boy, he said, I'll take you safely through the night. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. I had the witness yes. on Let's don't forget that, Amen. Stephen. But God's grace, because he, once he told me, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He told me that one time in my life over here in the old building in a very difficult time. Well, if he says that, that's good enough forever. So I, I accept that. I said, yes, help me just this week by God's grace. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You told us this morning that the hardest time of the night, and as soon as we started singing, I remember that. He said, safety. Yeah. I forgot I said it, Glendo. I said this morning, hardest time was through the night. We know that's true. It's true for sick people. It's true for the heavy and the oppressed. It's true. Something about day. It said in heaven, it didn't say there'd be no day there. It said there'd be no night there. But while we got night on earth and we got spiritual night to walk through, God says, I'll, I'll take you through. Safely through the night. Oh, this is wonderful. Praise the Lord. I want to praise the Lord for His protection, for His guidance, for His location. Oh, that's wonderful, Janet. So you and uh, your husband look so wonderful. It's really something how wonderful you look. I'm so thankful to Jesus and thankful that the joy of Jesus has never left your face in the entire years that you've been with me. I don't know, Janet, how many years it's been? Eight. Eight years. That's wonderful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, brother. Uh, I was going to speak earlier. I'm thankful for your opening prayer. Was... What'd you be? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. He's thankful for my opening prayer. I want to get that out to you. I came to choir and yes. I guess I'm catching what's going around. Yeah. Jesus. And head and legs yes. just aching. I thought, yes. well, I'll go to choir and sit in the back. Yeah. And, you know, I'll make it through. Well, we were recording, so I had to be, you know, I had to sing. I had right. To sing. So I thought, well, we'll sing a couple, you know, choir numbers and sing a, you know, a hymn, and then we'll go down. There were seven of them. Oh. You know, I kept thanking God, and you know, you know how I feel, you know, but it, it just wasn't wise getting help as I went along. Thank you, Jesus. And, and then, you know, now, here, you know, I think, well, you know, I'm sweating, and don't feel bad, but it's, it's a whole lot better to be here and sick and be home. Oh, that is right. so good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Like Billy says, it's just common sense. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just thankful. You know, yes. you, you yeah, I'm so thankful. Pray the Lord will will cover you with the precious blood of Jesus. And thank you that while I was praying in my prayer while ago, the Holy Spirit was operating about healing. So see, there's need of healing all through for various and sundry things, but for this that's come upon us at this time of year. I just want to say I'm thankful for God because I know you have to get out there and do things. Thank you, Jesus. Man, that's something that you would see that. Amen. That's something he'd be that sensitive. Time after time after time in here, I'm just in the choir. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God, I need too much help. I want to be like you. So precious to you. Glory be to God. Jesus, we thank you. Brother, you, you're on your way. Whatever whatever you see and desire, God said, delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. I was thinking about your wonderful background. You have a great background of reverence and appreciation because you were raised a Catholic boy. And that great background has contributed to your insight. Contributed to what he sees now. Isn't this wonderful? Yes. By God's grace. I believe you and Kathy told me he's been a great help to you. This young man. Praise him. And see, he's seeing things that mean so much that gives us strength in this hour. Praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm sure thankful for the spiritual whipping we get here. Amen. I'm so thankful. I, uh, I rode with, with Judea to church tonight and I just complained. And I complain. I don't. I don't know what came over me. It's just that that, that what well, complaining about, spirit, that selfish spirit. Yeah, sure. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm thankful to know it's there. You sure, John? And so I'm crazy. thankful for everything you tell us, for all the things you tell us. You know, I'm thankful that the time, the short time I've been here, that I've never been irritated over over anything that you said. I'm so thankful. The only thing I feel like with God is that. Uh, it just makes me feel like I'm more lost than ever. And yet, uh, you, again, I was with you uh, the other day with someone that you told us. The opportunity I had to share the witness of someone the other day. I told them, I, the only thing I know to do is to tell them about you if I want them to know how they should live. As far as I'm concerned. By God's grace, I'll feed the blood over there. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. But Thank uh, you. I told them, I said, when you find a great jewel, you want everybody to see it. 
And that's the way I feel about this church. Yeah. And about you oh, yeah. and about everybody here because they go to church and they, they hear These are people jewels. talk about people. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. you passed, when you said the greatest part of the ministry was in us, that yes. is true. Yes. Because when people come, yeah. they're going to be impressed by the people's that's lives, right. not the minister. Because they're not going to see your life. Yeah. They know you can act that way up there. That's right. right. They think I'm putting it on. Yeah, that's but right. But they we, know we, you're we not. know different. That's they it. They don't. That's and right. when they come and see us, and other, we're not talking about football games. That's the key. They're talking about different things. When church is going on, that's it. That's the ministry. That's, that's what the it, real John. ministry is, and that's why I want to get people here. You're right on. But it you right told there. me uh, inquire one night. You said that if you have the desire to have the desire to have the desire yeah. to do God's will, that it is as great that's as just the good. desire itself. That, that's exactly and that's right. That's kept me going ever since John, uh, three or four great. years ago. You told me that inquire. Yeah, to be to, to be willing to be made willing is the same as being willing. I yeah. learned that out of Reese Howe's intercessor. So I said, the des- to have the desire, to have the desire. To have the desire. Yeah. Is oh, as great oh, as yeah. the desire itself. Because that's where I was. Yeah, sure. And that's where I feel like I am. Yes, sir. I feel like I had the desire to have that desire to have the desire. It's good, John. But I'm not very far along. But at least as long as the desire is somewhere, yeah. Oh, yeah. as long as it's somewhere, <laughs> then there's hope. And oh, as yeah. long as we have hope, then uh, we can't fail. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I believe, like you, I believe the struggles are going to make it. Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe yeah. people are really hungry like GB is and how God's helped them oh, to grow. Oh, Jesus, we thank thee. I'm so thankful. Sure, Lord, I'm thankful. And Paul and, yeah. and Peter and oh, different people. Oh, yeah. If they knew what they're doing for this church. Oh, is I helping See, it, it's new life. Coming in. It's new life. It yeah, helps us. We need that. We need it. No matter how much people like Glendale need people to continue to grow and stay faithful, we still need new life. She needs new life. Yeah, we all need that. Yes, sir. Real thankful for everything you give us. Oh, praise yes. the Lord. Oh, that's so good. That's I so trust God will help you to sleep you. over the battles. Oh, praise the Yes. From being because the battles are furious. Because like you said, in a few days, we won't, we'll, won't be sorry. I said that. I days. spoke that right down there. Right? I said in a few days, you won't feel the way you're feeling now. Right. Some people feel it a certain way. It'll change in a few days. That's what I said. I said, oh, Lord, help me. I saw what flew out of me. I'm aware of it too. Charles, did I see your hand up? Yeah, I want to be appreciative of the chasing the hand of the Lord. Oh, what do you mean? That's sweet, Charles. Praise God. Well, thank you for the it's good. It's sweet, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Now, the true Christians respond that way. And it sure brings a relief to our Heavenly Father, it brings a relief to the servant for God's helped us so much. Did I see another hand? Everybody clear. I want to say an amazing story. Uh, CGB is an amazing man. Yeah. Because yesterday, yeah, we love after him. a day's work, yeah. he came and worked a school work day, yeah. which I think is probably one of the most difficult, hardest working times we ever had. Yeah. And that dear brother never complained, oh, never man. said a word, Thank had you, uh, insulation and fiberglass all over him, oh, and he Jesus. worked like a horse Jesus. for a for the rest of the day. Yeah, I want to so thank I want to thank Lord Jesus for, for GB. Oh, and uh, you would not have known he was a bit sick. Oh, yeah. So by God's grace, he pretty much acted like oh, you did Oh, praise yesterday. the Lord. Oh, yeah. He just went right on. He just worked and worked, 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 worked. Work, praise the Lord. And I want to thank the Lord for him. That's wonderful. Because it's quite a Glory wonderful thing. God. Hallelujah. Once I was called to speak to one of the largest church of God, church of God's in the whole nation. Uh, they had over a thousand Sunday morning, over eight or nine hundred on Sunday night. And they called me, the pastor Boyer, he called me to preach over there. He did several times, but this night he called me. I had responded. I, was, I had the flu. I was had a high fever. And I couldn't stay in one place any more than 15 or 20 minutes. I would have to remove myself, go to a restroom. And I didn't know how in this world I was going to do it. So I got under my steering wheel in St. Paris, and I got out of there, and I got sort of locked in. I said, well, I believe I can drive to Kenny's house and make it that far. Kenneth Wagner went with me. I got to Kenny, and I said, Kenny, I'm sick as a horse. He said, I'm sick as a horse, too. I said, well, get in beside me. Two horses are going to church. <laughs> now, we wouldn't have gone if Jesus hadn't wanted us to. But I knew God wanted us to. So we started for there together. We got in Brother Boyer's office. We said, Brother Boyer, we, we don't know how long we can stay on the stage. We may have to leave every little bit. He said, I'll be right behind you. I'm sick, too. There was three preachers off the sick. <laughs> said, that's all right. You, we'll just take turns leaving. Try to keep the stage occupied while the other one leaves. Now, there's three sick preachers, high fever. I want you to know that I got on that stage. 
Not one of us left for an hour and a half or whatever time it was. And I want you to know, when I started forward, I was still perspiring. I still had high fever. I stepped forward to deliver my sermon. And I preached, and God helped me so wonderfully. And when I finished the sermon, turned to walk back, I was perfectly well. All was gone. My, my, my insides were back together. All the perspiration was gone. All the fever was gone. And I didn't even break fever and run and perspire. It was gone. I was perfectly well. Thank you, Jesus. What do you think of that? God, God healed me while I was preaching. It's wonderful. Praise the Lord. That's sort of getting safely through the night. When we first started practicing this song, it really got in my heart. Oh, Joe, I know. Um, there's just so much in it. There's so much in really, it. really listen to the words yeah. because he says, I will never leave you. Yeah. I have often heard him say. Yes. I have walked this road before you. See, we're not walking a no. road that has not been walked no. before since. He's walked that walked. way. That's right. And he didn't lose his faith. <coughs> no. And if only take my hand, that's all he has got to do, yes. is to take his yes. hand and let me lead you in today. Christ will lead us home. And the words over here... In the blackest darkness, he will see me through. Oh, yes. As I place my faith in him, my strength he will renew. And see, that's just what you said. That's right. As sick as you were, you still went by faith. Well, because God and he gave me over you there. strength oh, yeah. as you went along. Well, I could have laid down on the seat or crawled in the back. But I positioned myself in the steering wheel and said, Now, Jesus, by your grace, I'm going to make it. I'm all locked in here. Help me to get this next 30 minutes. God, help me to make it. But when I but when I finished my preaching, I was perfectly well. You see, that was demonically imposed. That tells you that my Ill, illness was demonically imposed. He did not want me preaching. The devil did not want me preaching. He wanted me to go to bed. Why? I could call Brother Borden and said, I got high fever. It's 102, 103. I'm perspiring all over. My every bone in my body is aching. But I went by what the Holy Spirit said, and the Holy Spirit said, go. See, it was demonically imposed. He needed to know the difference, you know. But see, God helped me to know the difference. So I... I didn't pay any attention to it. And I assume, now I want you to be careful of this because we don't want to spread contagious diseases this winter. But I assume that I'm supposed to be there when I'm sick rather than not assume. I always assume that God wants me there. I come in in some time in awful condition. But I assume, I don't unassume, I assume that God wants me there. And I also assume that He will care for me if I will. Break my mouth. He tells me to stay home. Sometimes I puzzle him. We pray about it. But God has helped us every time to make it to service. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Safely through the night. This, this song was given to us to prepare us or help prepare us for the days ahead because he says good. when the winds are the coldest, oh, he'll keep us warm. That is so good. He'll be our shelter from the fury of the storm. That's whatever right. that storm may be, what it would be. That's right, Joe. Uh, storms of thunder, lightning, or whatever storms we're going through, that he will be our shelter from. Exactly it just seemed right. like that night when we practiced it the first time that God was saying, you put your faith and trust in me and I'll take you through all Exactly. This. Exactly right. I'm glad well, you I still think. believe that. I guess so. How long, how many years you've been saved? Oh, lands. <laughs> well, I first was saved when I was 16. But You've been then, saved uh, a good many years. Yes, sir, but I don't even remember. Burton Emma probably remembers how many years I've been here more than I do. But I started coming with Pastor George Noel was here. Oh, I'm so thankful. It's probably even been came over. as a sinner and yeah. would go home just bawling my eyes out from the old sanctuary yeah. and could not realize why I didn't go forward and just, yeah. you know, say, well, look, folks, I'm one of you. But it took a serious illness, see, to bring me down. Um, and, uh, Jesus, you I'm have to work through that to bring you in. And I'm thankful that through all the years, there's been many a time I've come and I haven't felt like it. But by God's yeah. grace, I still believe yeah. that through the days of my youth, yeah, right. mother going and mother yeah. continuing to go, yes. when, see, I probably didn't realize how awful she felt many, oh, many times. She got it to battle post. But she still struggled to go to church that's because so that's wonderful. where she found her strength. Praise the Lord. And yeah, that's where our strength is. We need so more spiritual strength than we need physical strength. You see, I'm so thankful for you and your ministry. And when you said this morning you wanted us to forgive you, you know, for... Yeah, I was well, sure. you see, what Patty said to you, I turned to Judy and I said, well, you know, Judy, I know by God's grace that Pastor never says anything to us but what it's not done out of love. Oh, but that's And so great. I just accept oh, yeah. that because... Oh, yeah. I know that's, that's right, really Joe. Hard. That's so right. It's true, Joe. I'm thankful God's there's grace. no doubts or reservations. Now that it's only by God's yeah, but grace. God, it's only by His grace that you and GB will ever be able to say that or will ever be able to walk together again down this trail. May the Lord protect us all. Praise the Lord. Well, is all our hearts clear? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, Harriet. I need to thank God and 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The man. And uh, for healing me. Thank you, Jesus. A uh, uh, week ago. Healing her a week ago. Uh, prayed for me. Yes. She come well. Yes. And uh, I want to thank Barbara, uh, your wife, for being so faithful to speak up quickly. Uh, and as soon as uh, she was well, because um, I, Jesus healed me um, just um, every uh, every day. I mean, he was healing. Oh, he was healing you. And, yes. Um, well, uh, I just um, I forgot about it. <laughs> I, I'm, Barbara reminded me that I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> you and forgot. I just had to thank Jesus. Yeah, that's good, Amen. And I appreciate so, everyone who, who uh, prayed for me. And the yes, oil that thank you, Jesus. Was, uh, placed upon my forehead and those, Man. those hands that touched me on the back. Praise the Lord. I I'm just so thankful for a loving congregation. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's so wonderful. I think your son was ready to speak. The service so far has been like uh, everybody's trying to help gird one another up. That's true, Jack. To gird our loins for the battles of yes. the week, of the yes. days. Yes. And it's been so encouraging to me because then this song is a promise. And it's just like you've been preaching this morning and past in recent days about Abraham and Sarah. Oh, yes. And all these included that. Here's the promise. It's placed for us. Oh, yes. He doesn't say there's not going to be struggles and battles and things, but yet there's the promise that we will be able to make it through. Right. And here's the promise. I, I tell you, it's really wonderful. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Praise the Lord, Jack. Oh, you're helping us. In these last few services, your help has been tremendous since you've been back home from travels or work. Yes, Peter? I want to praise the Lord because He will take us safe. That is life. exactly and right. Grace. We have to claim that. Amen. Amen. Right. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Safely through the night.
Only God could have helped you to sing it as wonderfully as the first time and given actually more witness the second time than the first. Even when you said home, when you, when I watched you ladies, when you, home, when you did that, it touched my heart. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I looked at your faces. I said, Jesus, these are the most precious people in the world. Couple, yes. couple with oil in St. Louis, Paris, Burton, and all the rest of God's people. Yes. But they are. Yes. And uh, I, I wanted the choir to, to hear the choir when I got back. Right, now I'm ready for Walton to come here. Rebecca, we're ready for Walton to come now. I was crying for our choir out there, if you remember. I said in the early days they had a, they had a virgin sound. That wasn't the words I used, but that's what I meant. A virgin sound. A sound of newness, of life, and joy, and of first blooming. That sounds back. Thank you. And you've prayed for this. Yes. That sounds back. It means that God's doing a spiritual work in right. our hearts right. to renew us. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Glory to God. We've feasted tonight from the table of God. Well, reluctantly, very reluctantly, we'll have you take your places. I, I admire you and I praise you and our Jesus for standing as soldiers. And may God strengthen your body. For I feel that even though you tire sometime standing, I let you rest once, as the Lord would help me. Sometimes I don't do that because it kills the spirit when you sit. Sometimes when one of you goes down, I feel it. And I have a harder, two to three times harder when one sets. But I don't let on. I never let you know that. But I know that that's the spiritual rule. But you've stayed at your post of duty. May God give you far more in joy and in blessing and healing yes. and in answers to prayer yes. than you've put out in your strength tonight. You may go down. Thank you. You know, the Holy Spirit is surely led for that as he did for the other. Yes. Sally looked over here and asked Steve if it was one or two. He told her which one it was, and that's the one she played, and I just finished. My thank you for being good soldiers, and boy, yes. God gave us, the, he gave us the response. <laughs> well, we'll have Jeannie sing, and then uh, David will preach. Now, both services, Holy Spirit's witness on Guy, but both services, he's been gracious to let us find a song that Jeannie could sing. Yeah. 
And did he help us this morning? Amen. Didn't he have great grace on us? Yeah, don't we serve a wonderful God? Yes. We serve a tremendous God. Praise the Lord. So the genie will sing, and the brother will share it tonight, and we'll have an offering and go home. God helping us. Glory to God. Are you pretty happy out there? Amen. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> oh, we've never had a service like this before. There's never been a service like this. So glad this is happening while Chuck and Gaynor and family are home. By God's wonderful grace, see, they'll treasure this. Chuck will see this in his dreams. Oh, oh yes, Mother. continue to be well to have a meeting from now on. Oh, glory. <laughs> it's been great. It's been wonderful to be here. Great place to spend that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She's so young and beautiful. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I wanted to love her because she's loved me like a son. I've never said that before, but she treats me like that. And I remember that E. Stanley Jones stayed in her home and she felt the Spirit of God. And when she came to the old sanctuary, she felt the same Spirit that was with E. Stanley. And we've not forgotten that to give God praise that it's His Spirit leading. Praise the Lord. Jeannie will sing and David will preach and then we'll see how it goes from there. Praise God. I want to thank you for being faithful and filling in for Guy today. Yeah, Jesus says he's with us. Yes. Say that. So Stephen just told me that when I said that, the Holy Spirit said, I am with thee. Amen. Amen. To pray for Guy that he'll be well. He's sick. That he'll be, he's probably so sick he can't hardly get out of bed. Pray that he'll be well. Because see, God would have, now some people don't understand that, how that could be. But that may tell us a few things. That his sickness is uh, imposed from without. The devil's fighting hard. Because, see, I knew when I got up this morning that Guy should sing. Did you? Oh, yeah. I thought both services. Yeah, well, that's great. That's and here the Lord would witness both services. But then they'd pray over Jeannie and Jesus say, I, I have a song. Now, Jesus knew that all along. So we pray that he'll be well. Yes. That he'll be well and be with us right away. Shoot. 